Hello lovely people. How are you all doing today? I hope you're well. I'm back in the garden at last after... Oh, it's been... Um, it's been over a week. We've just been having rain day after rain day after rain day after rain day and the only clear day in the last sort of 10 days or so was that day I went up to town, up into London. Anyway, so I'm back in the garden today. Hurrah! Just a couple of little jobs to do. Now, I don't know if you're all feeling the same as me. Oh, this blooming fleece has got a label that always tickles and I always think to myself, take the label out and then I forget. Anyway, sorry, digressing. Um, yeah, I've come down this morning and I feel flat as a pancake, <laughs> physically. It's weird. I was thinking about this as I was trudging here today, that my mind is alive with, you know, ideas and things I want to do and my heart's alive with passion to do it. <laughs> but my body's just going, nah, maybe not. I think I'm suffering from winter body syndrome. <laughs> it's like this every year. We sort of, we come through winter and Inevitably, we're spending more and more time indoors over winter, apart from anything because of the lack of light. But also, you know, we get the sort of grotty weather days, what have you, what have you. So I get to the spring each year and I just feel like my body is all uh, sort of flabby and weak. <laughs> it needs to do some physical work. So yes, after months and months of being moderately sedentary I wouldn't say I'm ever completely sedentary I'm always whizzing around doing something but it's not the same as that lovely kind of physical work we get up to in the garden so this is a warning to myself and to everybody else if you're feeling like you're suffering with winter body syndrome too ease back into it gently so like I said I'm going to do a couple of jobs today and over the coming weeks, I'll be down here more and more, getting more and more stuck in. And that'll help all those muscles to wake up and remember what they're supposed to be doing. It'll oil the ligaments, as it were. Oh, this, this label's really annoying me, sorry. Let me pull my t-shirt up higher than it. That should help. Yes, yeah, so ease back into it gently. Have a stretch. Change direction when you're working in the garden. And especially if you've just got your first allotment this year. Hallelujah. You know, you're going to be so enthusiastic to get stuck in, which is great. But, you know, if you've got a whole day where you can work in the garden, that's brilliant. But just change up the jobs you're doing. So if you're, if you're digging, maybe dig for half an hour, but then do something else. Just keep trying to change which muscles you're using, which direction you're using them in. So if you're bending, you know, remember to come up, stretch back the other way. If you're using your arms a lot, then maybe switch and do something where you're using your legs more. And at the end of your day, go home, run a long, hot, deep bath full of Epsom salts. It's the miracle cure for gardeners. Right, so, enough about our poor old winter bodies. So I've got a couple of jobs I'd like to do today. I want to see if I can get the little path sorted out in the herb bed. So right at the end of January, beginning of February, I managed to get hold of a load of, um, they were just kind of broken lumps of some old paving slabs. So I've swapped those, I've put those on all my cardboardy bits to weight them down and taken off the bricks so hopefully I can use the bricks to make myself a little path. Fingers crossed the ground isn't too wet after all this rain we've had because I'm going to need to take some soil out. But the other thing, and this is my absolute priority job today, and I'm kind of cross with myself for not sorting it out sooner, but it's to get some mulch onto my garlic and I'll be top dressing it with a bit of chicken poo too. The mulch, I really want to get on and, you know, every day that we've been having rain in the last 10 days, some of it's been really pelting rain. I've just been thinking about all that bare soil that's just getting pelted. So 
I have all winter I've been keeping my eyes out for a mulch of some description just to protect that bare soil. There have been a couple of occasions when I thought, oh, I can mow all the grass on site, but there hasn't been a committee member around to give me a lawn mower to do it with. So, yes, I'm going to use something today which isn't ideal, but it's better than nothing. So, that's a priority today. I might see also if there's enough left. I might also do the top bed, bed number one, where I've got my brassicas. So, where things are coming out and I'm creating bare patches. I just don't want bare soil with all this rain. And we're bound to have loads more pelting rain between now and say the end of April before I'm using the beds properly. So yes, a mulch is the priority of the morning if I can persuade my body to get up and get moving and get working. <laughs> I'd quite like to just sit here with a cup of tea and natter all morning with you guys. <sighs> Especially if it was live and we were interactive that's just a no-go with my rubbish computer and my rubbish internet connection. Never mind, right, you can tell I'm digressing, I'm delaying, I just need to get up and get on with it. So, like I would say to anyone else, just make yourself do it, Vivi, because the sooner you start doing it, the sooner you'll be into it, and the sooner the reward will come. As you know from previous videos, I've been collecting masses and masses of leaves. The idea being that they would go on all the beds this autumn as beds become empty. What I've been doing is I've been putting them in the big compost bin, giving them a bit of a strim in there, and then decanting them to the bags behind the shed. But the last lot, they're still in here waiting to be strimmed, and I thought, you know what, you had a bit of a strim. So the plan today, I'm thinking, oh, look at this loveliness. Really wet, really. Oh, they smell beautiful. I thought if I give them even more of a stream down, then they may help as a mulch for the garlic. I'm hoping that, actually, <laughs> let's not fill it too full. Yeah, I'm hoping that by trimming them down quite small, there's less chance they're going to blow around everywhere, there's less leaf to make a sail in the wind. And like I said, they really are quite damp, so that should also help them to, um, to stay put. And like I was saying in the shed, it's, it's a case of something is better than nothing, surely, at this stage. So here we go. Strim down quite little. Okay, I'm th I think it's going to be a case of just um, one truck at a time. And there's still going to be some big bits in there. Yeah, let's have another go in there. That'll do. Right. First things first, though, let's get that garlic top dressed with some chicken poo. Just before I dress it and cover it, I just wanted to show you the soil. Can you see how the rain has compacted it? Oh yeah, and the problem is, with bare soil like this, oh, we're looking at erosion from rain, so we're, you know, nutrients getting washed away, the soil structure getting wrecked. So yeah, this is really, really something to do in the autumn before the winter rains come. So it's one of those things of note to self, when the garlic goes in, get it mulched and covered straight away because it really has taken a battering already. There's a couple of little weeds poking through here and there as well. So I'll just whip those out quickly and then get it dressed. 
So I'm just giving it a top dressing with some um, of these chicken manure pellets. Really easy to use, easy to store if you don't have much space like me. Now, I've always tended to give the garlic a top dressing around about this time of year, February, March or so. If you think how long it's been in the ground, you could probably do with a bit of help right now. In terms of application, just follow whatever the, uh, the guidelines are for whatever product you're using. Now that should do it. Just to give those a little bit of a, a little bit of a help as we go into the spring and they start to grow again. Well, they haven't really ever stopped growing, have they? So that's some of the leaves I've just strimmed. Now, I've no idea how well this is going to work or not, but like I say, I think at the moment, something has surely got to be better than that. Oh, you can't see that, can you? Let me tip you down a bit. Coming down. Hopefully, they're not going to get too blown about. But you know, oh, leaves blow about everywhere anyway, don't they? I'm sure people can't complain about leaves <laughs> if a few of these migrate to other plots. And then, once the garlic comes out in about, it's usually about May sometime, middle of May, this bed is for the flint corn. So probably, hopefully, what I can do, because I bring the flint corn on in loo rolls, is just pull the leaves aside, pop the flint corn straight in, bring the leaves back over, and then they can stay as a mulch here all summer too. But that's only one bucket. I reckon I've got about 20 to 40 more buckets to go. But uh, yeah, mm, it smells gorgeous. Good, I'm glad to get this job done. I'm kind of a bit cross with myself that I didn't get it done at the end of the autumn in October when I planted the garlic. Um, but never mind, at least it's done now. I don't know how effective it's going to be. I've never used leaves as a mulch like this before, but, well, hopefully it'll stop my poor soil from getting a hammering with the winter rains. Because the other thing is, if I didn't get it covered, then as we go into sort of April, May, June, as we start to be warm and sunny, that surface would just bake to concrete. So, yeah, glad to get that done today. It's been a bit of an effort, been a been a bit time consuming but I am sure my lovely little garlic and my soil is going to be happier for it and the other thing is of course it's creating another little micro environment for um for some more life isn't it so that's got to be a great thing all right what's the next job on the list just before I move into the herb bed I thought I'd have a quick look in the cold frame and yay I have signs of life from my sweet peas oh my goodness ooh da thunk it just a couple in the loo roll ones they were the ones which went in dry just as they were and the ones in the pots over here I can see about one two, three, four, five, six, seven or so shoots. They're the ones that I left uh, on that soaked napkin for a few days. Oh, I'm delighted to see not only signs of life, <laughs> but signs of sweet peas. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, this will be the year when I have sweet peas. I also want to show you signs of life over here in the herb bed. So, 
let's just gingerly step in here oh it's going to be a bit wobbly for a moment as i find my feet so the rhubarb crown that i planted last gosh i think it was november i had a quick peek the other day it's going to be a bit tricky one-handed and there were signs of life so if you remember i put all this on to insulate just because it was its first year Where did I see some shoots the other day? Is that a shoot? Aha! Uh -huh. Can you see there? The first little shoot! Yay! Can I see somewhere? Somewhere else this side. It's a bit... Oh! It's a bit tricky one-handed. Hang on, let's have some of these leaves away. Is there another one in there somewhere? I saw... Oh, I can't see now. I need to do it with both hands. But yes, there's definite signs of life in there. There we go. Tucked away there. Can you see that? Yay! <laughs> so I'm going to keep it tucked up for now because although it's mild during the day at the moment, it's still pretty chilly at night. And while it's in its first year, while it's such a little baby, I want to keep it warm and secure. And now for a little experiment. So... I know this sunshine is probably a bit of a trick today and it's so warm just sitting here. I've actually taken layers off, but I'm going to try something I don't normally do. Um, <laughs> I'm going to sow some salad type leaves. Now normally over the winter I, I don't have many salad leaves, I tend to go more for the brassica leaves they're gorgeous but also in terms of outside space and growing not so much so I do do a few um, some of my neighbors are down I do do a few sort of what you might call microgreens on the windowsills at home over winter but now I'm getting to that stage where all the windowsills are being taken up by propagators or the geraniums etc etc so I thought what I'd do today um, is sow some to put in the cold frame now, like I said, I've not done this before. It's really, really early for sowing this sort of stuff. But I thought, well, you know what? In for penny, in for pound. I've got a little bit of seed left over from last year. Um, I've obviously got seed for this year anyway. But I thought, well, if I give it a go and it works, brilliant. That's a few more leaves to eat in the meantime. And if it does work, what I'll do is I'll just do... I've got one tray ready to sow today and then I'll sow another one in three or four weeks time. Who knows? We'll see. It's worth a go, isn't it? Uh, it's like I was saying the other day, if you don't if you don't give something a go, if you don't try, you don't know, do you? And if it's a total fail, well, pff, so what? I'll just use the compost for something else. So I've got a few rocket seeds. Oops. I don't want to do all of them. <laughs> like I say, if it if it is going to work, so the plan is, did I say I can't remember if I said I'm distracted by the sunshine, it's lovely. If this works in the cold frame, that's where I'm gonna put them, then um, I'd like to do a few more in another couple of weeks. I suppose. I could actually just keep doing them from now right up until I sow any directly in the ground, which I'll probably do in about May. Okay, that's my rocket. And I've got some, I can't remember exactly what they are, but it's some lettuce. <laughs> it's not the Reuben's Red. Thank you so much, everybody, by the way. When I was going through my seeds, a few weeks ago and I was saying that I hadn't been able to find any Rubens Red. Loads of you gave me links but it seems that I followed I followed loads of those links and all but one of them had no stock and the one that did have them they were only 99p and I thought oh that's brilliant but then it was something like 4 99 postage and I just thought it's not worth it I haven't got five quid to spend on a packet of seeds so, no Rubens Red this year. 
but I'll definitely grow them again. Well, next year if I can get the seed. <laughs> Maybe it's one of those things one needs to buy early. Oh, this would be lovely if it works because, like I said, I don't eat many salad leaves, but every now and again I do want them. Um, sort of, you know, if I do, like, um, I quite like to do a wrap with, say, hummus and beans and that sort of thing. So some leaves and that would be nice. And then finally I've got a little bit of spinach. Much bigger seeds. Let's space these out. <clears throat> <laughs> it's it's like a little miniature garden in this tray. I've got rose. <laughs> I have to have my rose. <laughs> I just can't help myself. I know it probably drives some folk crazy. I know there are some of you who are much more, more um, laissez-faire about your planting and you plant in clusters, in, in swathes, however you like to call it. But for me, <laughs> I don't know. I'm a neat freak. I like my rose. Okay, so I'll just give a little bit of a, a little bit of a covering. Not too much. I want the light to get to them to um, to remind them that it's time to grow. Uh, yeah, am I hopeful about this? I don't know. Like I say, it's, it's way early if they were going out in the open ground. But in the cold frame, that little bit of protection, who knows? Suck it and see, as my granddad would say. Just give that a bit of a firm. Yep, let's tuck that in the cold frame. And uh, wait and see what happens. I was going to do the path in the herb bed today, but it's turning into a bit of a high pain day for my knees. So I think I'm going to call it quits for now. It's been so lovely to enjoy a bit of sunshine today. Take a few layers off, actually feel the warmth of the sun again. Just heavenly. Um, I'm not fooled by it though. It's still way too soon for the vast majority of my sewing here. Um, we can quite easily get some really nasty weather in March. Well, as you saw last year, first week of March, we had the beast from the east, which dumped a load of snow on us. It's beautiful, but uh, not conducive to putting seeds in the ground. So in terms of sowing out there, pretty much nothing till the end of April. Sewing at home, a bit more in the middle of March. Like I say, those those letters in the cold frame, it's just a little experiment. Um, if it doesn't work, it's absolutely no loss to me. And if it works, well, that'll be a pleasant surprise. So we'll see what happens. But it's gorgeous today to see those little signs of life from the sweet peas, the rhubarb shoots. Oh, it's lovely. And I was just having a quick look in the herb bed because a lot of them well most of them are perennials and I can just see some new growth coming at the bottoms of them really really lovely <sighs> so it's definitely it looks over the next two weeks like we're set fair with this weather so I shall make the most of it I'll try and probably do I'll try maybe to come down even once a day just to start cracking into those jobs the the herb bed path and the bean trenches build those muscles back up <sighs> oh the other thing I wanted to mention today um if you remember at the end of last year I had that it was a total wipeout with the leaks last year because of the island leaf miner um and I made the decision I'm just not going to bother one of the reasons I was thinking about it now is because it would be around about now that I'd be sowing my leek seed and it felt odd not sowing any this year. Um, but then I was reading an article by Alice Fowler. I really, really enjoy Alice Fowler's writings. I enjoy watching her and tell it. I think she's marvellous. Anyway, so I was reading an article and she 
oh gosh, I've got to remember now. I think she tried this last year, but she direct sewed her leeks and had them really small outside of the two leaf moth laying seasons and had them out before any damage could occur. So I've always grown my leeks as a winter crop. So I sow them now, plant them out, usually about the middle of May, and let them grow, 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 grow all year. And then I just harvest them as and when I, would, I need them over the winter. But what she was doing was harvesting them really, really small. So they ended up being a summer veg which is kind of odd to me because leek to me is a winter veg. But anyway, I thought I'd give it a go this year. So the plan will be where I've got the carrot bed to have the leeks between them, as I have done in the past, but this time to just direct sow them and pull them out when they're little tiddlers and just do some successional sowing. So I guess it'll be more like a spring onion than a leek. But it's a nice flavour, isn't it? And I think what will be interesting if that works for me is using them in the summer instead of the winter because normally my go-to would be leek and potato soup yum 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 or leek and potato gratin yum 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 <laughs> all those sort of yummy hearty winter foods so it'll be it'll be interesting for me to use them and cook with them in the summer when I'm not so inclined to have those big hearty meals but have something lighter we'll see it's fun to experiment, isn't it? And I think it's one of those things where um, if you've got a little bit of space, then yes, try something. Either try something new or try a new technique. I've got to the stage where I'm not going to try a whole bed with something new. I don't want to risk that because then if it's a total fail, that's a big chunk of food missing in my year. But I'm really happy to try, like I've done with the lettuce, the salad leaves today, and to try the leeks. I'm really happy to do it if it's not taking up any space, if I've got seed anyway, it's not costing me anything. Yeah, give it a go. So, anyway, on that note, yeah, have a think about what experiments you could try this year. If you've been doing your veg garden for three or four years now and think, oh yeah, I fancy something new, whether it's a new seed or a new technique, Let's all give something new a go and let each other know how it works. And you never know, by the end of the year, we may have discovered a gazillion new ways to do things. Yay! All right, my lovely, gorgeous people. It's time for me to go home. My tummy is rumbling. I need to eat some lunch. I think it's going to be beetroot soup for lunch today. Mmm. -hmm. Yum, yum, yum. So, um... Oh. I'm looking at the garden. I don't want to leave it with the sun shining on it so beautifully. I may sit for a little while. Yes, I think I'm going to sit for a little while. So I will say cheerio to all of you. Hang in there, all of you who are under feet of snow. My goodness, I know you've some of you have been really, really clobbered by the snow in the last few days. I know some of you have had power cuts. <sighs> I hope everything's getting fixed and I hope you've hunkered down and you're surviving whatever you're surviving on the last crumbs in the cupboard. All right, lovely people, I will see you all again really soon, I hope. But in the meantime, take care of yourselves and happy garden daydreaming.